Unify Network 9.1.120. This has been released for a few days and there's some really good updates in here that you need to know about. And we're gonna go through them in there one by one and have a look at some of the what the new updates are and how they actually benefit you with your setup. So let's jump straight in and we have a look at the screen right here. So Unify Network application 9.1.120, add traffic close, enhance QoS, expands multi-WAN, and improvements and bug fixes listed below. So the first big one is the traffic flows and I think this has been asked for for a long time and I'm really excited about this one. So what this basically does is it allows you to look at your traffic a little bit more granular and do a little bit of basically as you would have with logging but it's a little bit more easier and simpler to use. You do need Unify OS 4.2.8 and these are the supported models. So we have the EFG, the UDM Pro models, we have the Unify Dream Wall, we have the Cloud Gateway Max, Cloud Gateway Fiber, and then we have the Gateway version. So Enterprise, Pro, Fiber, and Max. And it's saying there's an asterisk next to some of them and it says for better retention, storage must be inserted. So it's got to put the log somewhere. So the more storage you have on there, the better retention you're going to have. Let's start by first looking at those. And the way to get to that is the insights button on the left hand side on there. And then you click flows at the top and you can see everything right here. So we have just my home assistant that I've just accessed just now. So we can see the destination and where the source is. So home assistant to my destination, other, and then what direction we're going. So IOT to my main network, allow and the time and date. If we click on it, we can dive in a little bit further. It says the policy type, what service it is, and it gives you a little bit more information about the source and destination. Now, this is gonna be really useful for a lot of people. And you can see right here in the bottom, I have 100 of 10,000 plus flows. Now, obviously you're not gonna go through 10,000 rows themselves. We're gonna have a look at the different flows and how we can tune this down to obviously get the information that we need. So initially we can have a quick look and customize this and go to blocked or threat looking at the flows we can have the risk factor so low medium and high we can have all the allowed connections or blocked connections and then there's this little plus button on the right hand side right here so we can click more and then down here is where we can drill in a little bit further so if you know the specific machine you're looking for you can go and click select and say i want to look at my mac studio and then it's going to show me all the traffic from my mac studio so you can select the device you want and you can see all the traffic that's coming up on here we can select a specific zone so if you want internal gateway vpn hotspot DMZ and you can choose the type of network, IP address, port and even region. You can do the same with the destinations. You can really make this as granular as you want it to be. So if you want the source and destination, IP addresses, if you want the ports that you need specifically, you can go and drill this down to make it further. You can even drill down with the type of traffic. So you can choose a service, a protocol, the interface in, interface out. There is a massive amount that you can set up with this. And finally, the last one, I will include it just for completeness, is the policy. Is it part of the firewall, the intrusion prevention or protection. We can also filter out some of the columns and there's a lot more information on here. Obviously not everything is ticked. So there's a lot that you can actually add into this. So overall, for those that were looking for some kind of logging and the traffic flows that were going through their network, this is gonna be the next step for you. I probably will dive a little bit deeper into this and do a full tutorial on it because it is quite an important update and I think a lot of people will find this useful. With the traffic logging, there's a few different options you can pick and how you can configure this. So we can go to settings in the bottom left corner and then system and then we can click on traffic logging at the top. There's NetFlow, which captures and exports traffic information to a collector, so if you're using a third party tool. There's the flow logging, so do you want all traffic or block traffic only? There's some additional flows down here, so gateway DNS. This logs local network traffic, and then we have the Unify service. This logs from Unify devices to various online services, including Site Manager and then all Unify Device Management, which logs everything from the Unify devices. We have the activity of the syslog, which will be off, internally stored, or with a seam tool. This only allows you to select one, so you only have one option. There's no way to do both of them at the same time. And then we have the debug logs, if you want to pick some debug logs. The data retention is probably gonna be a key one for a lot of people. How long do you wanna hold this for? So you have the different options from seven days all the way up to 365 days. You can leave it on auto if that's what you want. And then finally, we have the SNMP monitoring. The next update is the traffic overview and it's literally in the same place where we were. You can gain insights into the top destinations and active traffic. So if we go back to here and we click on overview, you can see it's showing me exactly where all of my traffic is going. In terms of all the traffic, it's 2.9 million, which is low. There's 49 of them which is suspicious one which is concerning and 265 which is blocked and it gives you a little option if you want to enable cyber secure by proof point you can click activate so we can see we have 265 that block and if i want to click into them we can actually load up the page and this will show us everything that's going on there 
And you can see right here, we have a whole bunch of IPs. They're blocked, what the risk level is and what device it came from. So you have that option. And this is going all the way back to April. Next, we have the enhanced QoS rules. So this is traffic prioritization. So if there's any business critical apps that you need to make sure is definitely getting out to the internet first, we can do that. There's things like burst control, expanded VPN integration. And a note on this, it does require the zone based firewall. If we go back right here, we can go to settings and then routing and then we can look at the QoS and we have two different options here. So we can prioritize critical traffic, which we can just click configure. And these are gonna be your critical apps. So these are generally your voice apps. So Google Meet, Teams, Zoom, WebEx and FaceTime. You can choose what interface it goes out of and how frequently that is. So if you only want it to be between Monday to Friday, nine to five, you can do that. Or if you want it a specific one time, you can do that. You have a whole host of options that you can choose to tweak this. Next, we have the actual QoS rules themselves. So you can obviously prioritize limit, prioritize and limit, source and destination. Is it a device, is it a network? Are you looking at an app, an IP, a domain, or even a specific region and the ports? Again, you have also the download and upload bandwidth limits if you wanna add them on, along with a schedule as well. Next, I'm gonna show you the expanded multi-WAN support and you're no longer limited to two WAN connections. You can now have up to eight of them and that works across multiple gateways. So we have all the UDM series, we have the EFG, the UCG, Fiber Max and Ultra, the Dreamwall, and then we have the gateway version. So the Gateway Enterprise, Gateway Pro and Gateway Max. And to get that set up is really easy and simple. You simply go here, I have two configured already. You click add WAN port and you can go ahead and set this up. So all you do, select the port that you're gonna have this set up on and you can have up to eight of these connected. The next one is the improved port UX. So we have redesigned port configuration, the SFP analyzer, the quick actions and the ability to bulk edit names within the port manager. So if I quickly show you how this part works, this is the 16 port right here. And if we click on the port, we now have a pop-up that comes up on the side. This kind of feels like how they used to have this a little while back. Those that have been using Unify for a little while, you know about this little pop-up box that comes on the right-hand side. So I feel like this has gone back to how it used to be, but let me show you how it used to be in the old version. We'd click on the port and it would then bring you down here with all the relevant information. So no longer does that happen and it's now on the right hand side. For the SFP analyzer, you can click on here and click SFP analyzer and it'll tell you everything that's going on. It looks like I do have one issue right here with no signal detected. Please check the cable. So it looks like it's transmitting, but it's not receiving. So very easily and quickly, you're able to diagnose your issues with something like this and make sure everything's running at the most optimal speeds. For quick actions now, you can see on the right hand side, we have power cycle and locate. So the locate obviously pulses it. You no longer have to go into the settings and then scroll down to the bottom to do this. You can do it right here. And same with the power cycle as well. One thing that's actually further down on this list, but I'll show you while I'm here at this point is the last known device. So you can actually see within the port manager what device was connected last to these ports. So I have my home assistant in one, the desktop in another. We have a Mac studio in another and it shows you the time it was last connected as well. So this one was a little while ago. It's probably over a month, which was 19th of March of 2025. Then we have a new VPN client wizard, which again looks a little bit different. Everything is pretty much the same within, but it just looks a little bit different. And if I show you what that looks like right here, we can see the VPN client and the options right here. And if you want to see what that used to look like, it used to look a little something like this. And same when you go to VPN server, it looks ever so slightly different with this part right here in the old version. And then in the new version, if we go to VPN server, you've got all the different ones that you can manage. And if you create new, you can see it looks a little bit different to what it used to be. Now we'll look at some of the other improvements that they've put on here. So one thing that you'll see that came out in Ubiquiti's video is device replacement. And you can click on a device that's not available at that point. And you can say device unreachable and literally set a replacement device. You type in a MAC address and that goes and replaces the device. This is gonna be particularly useful for things like access points and switches as well because you don't need to reconfigure everything it will send out the same ssids that it was previously and have all the same vlan configurations across the switches as well we have an overview for all access points in airview which we'll cover in just a moment i'm going to show you the mdns proxy and if we go to settings networks you can see we have right here mdns proxy and we can choose the custom services that we may want so we can choose them all across here for example like apple airdrop or apple airplay it's really good that you can make this a lot more granular now but i think what also would be useful is if you could select the networks that you want them to flow across as well. Maybe that might be something that will come in a future version. Another thing I think a lot of people are excited about is the fact that you can now use Cloudflare in your dynamic DNS. So just simply type in your host name, zone name and API token and away you go that is all configured and set up. 
added client analyzer, so it provides a detailed client health, including TX retries and connection history. This is a good feature that we've a lot of people might have been waiting for. So if I select a wireless device and we click analyzer, we can see the whole analyze, we can see the history of this device. At the moment, it's only showing one day, but we can look at one week, one month, one year, and it shows you some really good information for you to be able to troubleshoot some of your devices that you may have issues with. It shows you the band and the width that it's using, it shows you its capabilities and the TX retries, and it shows you IP address and which access point it's connected to. We can do the same with the access points as well. You can click on air view, shows you the different access points and it shows you all the information. Again, you can make this a little bit more customized so you can go back and troubleshoot that day or specific time that you need. And you can do this with all the access points as well. So it shows you all the information. It then shows you the density and the connectivity and any issues that you might have had throughout that day. It then tells you about each of the clients and some of the history and connection issues as well. And this then helps you troubleshoot any issues that you may have on your network. There's a whole host of things in here and I'll drop a link down to them in the description below if you want to take a look at some of the other ones. If there's any others that I've missed that you want to see a little bit more on, let me know down in the comments and I'll see if I can put a video together on it. There's a few other things that I'll quickly go through right here, which is the API enhancements. So we have those here. We have some firewall enhancements. We now have the ability to duplicate firewall rules, which is a big one for a lot of people. So you don't have to keep creating the rules to make those tiny tweaks. You can now just duplicate them and away you go if you want to apply it to another zone you can go ahead and do that. We have the added ability to disable radios in Radio Manager. There's a whole bunch of improvements with Wi-Fi as well, some of the ones that I've shown you earlier, but there's a whole list of them here. There's also a few bug fixes as well. Again, I'll leave this down in the comments below. As I mentioned at the start of the video, there's some really good updates in here. And if there's anything specific you really want to dive deeper into, again, let me know down in the comments below. For now, this is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.